Hello guys. So let's start our next discussion. So we're finished with infiltration and embedding now, guys. Abilis. So now the tissue block needs to be cut into thin sections, okay? And be placed in a slide. So yun yung process natin today. So we're going to discuss sectioning or also called as microtomy. So our topics for today, so the process of sectioning, what is it? The, di the different types of microtomes and knives that we use in the process of sectioning. Hanggang microtomes lang tayo sa part one. The stroping and honing, ways of sharpening your knives. Yes, kasama yan. And uh, the steps on sectioning and minor steps after sectioning. Okay, so pag natin, let's begin. So guys, notice here, so the woman yeah, has inserted the tissue block in a equipment called microtome. And now she is creating tissue ribbons or tissue section. So that process that she is doing down there is sectioning or microtomy. Okay, so just take note, guys, isn't it that I think thick tissue class, you cannot focus it under the microscope. Diba? So it should be very thin so that you could view it under the microscope so that light could pass through it. So that would be possible through sectioning and or microtomy. Okay. So it's also called as microtomy because the equipment that we use, guys, is microtome. Okay. So it's capable of producing thin sections. So we are setting a specific type of thickness. Yan. So, ang measurements natin ngayon is on microns. Ganun, ganun, ganipes, guys. Micrometer or microns. Yan. Ganun, ganipes. Diba? I, I mentioned that it's as thin as the hair. Okay? Actually, yun na yung minimum thinness. Okay? Unless you're cutting hard tissues, medyo makapal dapat. So, average, guys, um, it's microns, mga 4 to 6 micrometer. So, we use a steel knife or blade, which is fixed to the machine. So, guys, using a microtome is highly dangerous kasi there is a blade and knife involved, okay? And especially, guys, if it's a manual microtomy, Yan. So, ito, yung iniikot yan, yan, manual. So, it could cause ergonomic uh, hazards, yan, due to repetitive movement. So, we have, so, basic parts of a microtome. So, all microtome guys have a block holder or tissue block holder where your tissues are placed on a certain position, on a fixed position, ganyan. So, nakalagay dyan. We have a knife, carrier, or holder. Yan, dito, yung sa may red na yan, dyan, naka attach ang knife. And we have pole, ratchet feed, wheel, and adjustment screw. So guys, this is the mechanism inside the microtome. Itong pole, ratchet feed, wheel, and adjustment screw. Nasa loob. This happened inside the microtome. Okay? So this mechanism, guys, so once you turn this wheel, yan, Atas at baba yung block holder. Okay? So, to line up the tissue block in proper position with the knife, adjusting the proper thickness. So, guys, pag minumove mo rin tong microtome, nag-forward nag yung tissue block. Okay? So, that it would come in contact to the knife. Yan, mamaya pag-aralan pag natin. Yan. So we have different types of microtomes. So we have rotary, we have rocking, we have sliding. Under it, we have two, we have ultra thin, we have freezing microtome, and cryostat or cold microtome. Pero parang hindi na masyado ginagamit yung cold microtome. It's cryostat. Okay. So for first, we have rotary or my, minot. Microtome. Yan. So, rotary microtome. So, this is the most common uh, microtome that we use in the laboratory. Guys, uh, wala pa rin tatalo sa manual because even though there is no current 
you could use it. That's the main advantage of it. And guys, if you bought a really good quality of microtome, you could use it for years. Okay? Pwedeng gamitin ng matagal na panahon ang isang microtome. Okay? So, we have manual, semi-automated. So, one motor to advance either the fine or coarse hand wheel. So, we have two wheels. So, ayan. Eh, fully automated. So, sure ako na fully automated may, may ganitong um, buttons yan that will adjust the hand wheels. So, ang galing no, guys. So, kahit fully automated na siya, hindi pa rin nawawala yung ganitong form format niya. Okay. So, thank you for the GIF. Good na mga nahanap akong GIF. So, guys, this is fully automated. Ayan. Kasi merong ano, yung button eh. So, at least, there's no repetitive movement pag ganun. Hindi na kailangan ganun ng ganun si MedTech, yung advantage niya. So, let's uh, let's see kung anong, na, kung anong characteristics ng rotary or minot microtome. So, it's uh, most commonly used. It is a vertical movement. Okay? So, the tissue... Tissue block, uh, tissue block moves vertically. Yan. <laughs> Yan. Mamaya, you would see other movement of the motor, other microtome. So, vertical to, okay? And what else? It's for paraffin. Yan. So, best ang paraffin sa rotary. Pwede ring large blocks. It, it would fit. Yan. Notice, so, oh, yung lagay ng tissue block. Yan. So, hindi masyadong, hindi okay yung masyadong malaki. And you need to trim the tissue block to let it fit in the tissue holder. Okay? Not so. Okay? So, inventor Minot from 1885 to 1886. Tagal na rin. And the uh, tissue ribbon that is um, produced is 4 to 6 micrometer. Yan. So, yun na yung pinaka-manifest. 4 to 6 micrometer. The advantage of your rotary is it could produce serial sections. So when we say serial sections, marami, it can produce a large number of sections. And guys, the rotary or microtomes, guys, are heavy. It's about 40 to 60 pounds. So about mga 20 to 30 kilos. Ganun kabikat, guys, because um, it should be, the microtome should be very stable. Yeah. Because class notice, diba? every time there are moving parts, there is vibration. And guys, vibration on tissue sections, guys, is bad. Okay? It could create lines, horizontal lines, or washboard effect sa tissue ribbon mo. Ayaw natin yun. So, vibration is a no-no. So, it's very important that your microtome is stable. Kaya, ano siya, mabigat. Okay? It's... Expensive, however, it's an investment and dangerous since the blade is oriented in an upward position. Yan. So, yan. microtomes are heavy to reduce the vibration. So, guys, ito, quality control lang. So, daily, every day, you clean up the paraffin debris. And nearly, guys, you should perform preventive maintenance. Yan. So, you should allow the the manufacturers the uh, engineer where you bought the microtome to maintain it yeah pa maintain natin sa kanila usually and uh meron na akong attend na seminar guys that um uh, sabi that we should not allow the medical technologists to use an equipment if they don't know how to troubleshoot the equipment properly so kung Kung hindi niya alam troubleshoot, if, it, if the medic do not main, know how to maintain the equipment, do not allow them to use that equipment, okay? So, medics are good, pindot-pindot ng equipment, ganyan, use the equipment, pero pag maintain na, wala na, gusto mag-maintain, ganyan, mag-alaga ng equipment. But that's so important, guys. That's part of the job. We should take care of the equipment that help us do our jobs easier, okay? So, we have 
um, parts of our equipment. So, meron tayong base plate or the stage and the heavy platform. Microtome base plate, a platform which has rails that secure the knife holder base. Okay, so ito, itong base, yan. So, parang hindi gumanaw itong knife holder. Dapat it's attached on a base. And knife holder base, a part that anchors the knife holder to the microtome stage the knife holder base can be can be moved toward or away from the block. Ayan. So this one, guys, you could move it forward or backward. Ayan. It must be stationary and blocked during microtomy. So guys, this is the area where we put our blade or our knife. Okay. So the knife or blade is vertical. So pwede kang masugat talaga dyan, Okay. So your knife holder has three Three parts, your blade clamp, yan, itong glue. It's a clamp. Knife tilt for adjusting the knife angle. Yan, sa part 2, pag-aaralan natin yan. And face plate that guides the ribbons away from the blade and towards the operator. Kung hindi ako nagkakamali, guys, ito yung face plate. Ayan. Kung baga, if you try using a printer, isn't it na meron siyang, sa dulo ng printer, eh, may flap. So that yung bond paper, pag nalaglag siya guys, hindi siya malalaglag sa floor. Okay, makakatch yung bond paper pag nagprint ka. Same thing is true with face plate. Para hindi malaglag yung tissue ribbons. Is, ayun, merong taga-guide kung saan pupunta yung tissue ribbon, which is a face plate. <clears throat> so this is the face plate. Yan. So that the tissue ribbon will go towards the... Uh, Operator. So we have cassette clamp or block holder. It holds the paraffin block in place. Yeah. It moves up and down in, in your rotary microtome. We have a coarse hand wheel. Itong, ito moves the block holder either toward the knife or away from the knife. Yeah. Ito. So towards the knife or away from the knife and advanced hand wheel. So it advances towards the it, it allows it to advance towards the front and back. Yeah. It you could set the specified microns. Yeah. I think. Yeah, ito to. Yeah. So guys, you could specify the specify the micron. So pag i-adjust mo tong micron, ang ang mag-iiba itong advancement hand wheel. So, at the micron will set the thickness of the tissue ribbon. So, this is what one, one micron looks like. So, notice, pag manipis ang... Um, ganitong itsura, pag manipis ang um, paraffin section. Okay? So, one, two, three, guys. Madaling mapunit na to, Okay? The optimal ribbon sizes are four to six when it comes to rotary microtomes, okay? At mata medyo makapal na ang 7, 8, and 9. So, guys, we have a safety lock. So, that if para hindi hindi gumagalaw pababa sa blade yung tissue block, yan, you could lock your course hand with, you okay? know, as safety for your security. Next is Cambridge microtome. Yan. So, here, ang kamay naman, it's in a rocking motion. Ganun naman ata ito. Yan. Itong rocking cambridge microtome. So, imbis na ganito yung kamay, ganito. So, can, can only be adjusted to a certain extent. It's a simplest type. Yan. It's the most basic type. And it consists of a heavy base. Yan. And two arms. Two arms. I think yung arm andito sa likod. It could cut small and Large blocks. Yan. For paraffin embedding, it's the most simple by Paul Trefal in 1881. So, mas lupa itong rocking or Cambridge microtome. It gives thicker sections, 10 to 12 micrometer or micron. It has rise, rise size restrictions. So, medyo makapal. Difficulty in orienting the block. It's hard siguro to adjust kung gaano kaharap yung tissue block cannot be used for serial sections since tissues are cut in slightly curved planes so serial sections so rotary pa rin ng best next guys sliding microtome yan so notice 
kanina, yung sa rotary, yun yung ano natin, rotary, guys, yung knife, it's stable, okay? Now, here, this is the most dangerous because the knife is the one that is moving instead of the tissue block, okay? So, the tissue block remains uh, st stable or, or held firm on the base. Ang lumagumagalaw ay ang, ang knife. Yan, that's very dangerous. Yan. So, it's horizontally moving. It's for hard tissues. Yan. And hard blocks. For celloidin and ester wax, ang mga sliding microtomoms, mga titigas kay paraffin wax. And for to 9 micrometers, pwedeng, kasi guys, itong mga dense tissue, mga, mga decalcified bone, Kailangan medyo makapal para hindi siya lang mag-crumble, okay? And most dangerous type. So, we have two. We have standard sliding. So, the advantage of this, yan, since nandito, guys, yung tissue block, you could place large tissues, okay? Large celloidin blocks. So, I think this is the brain, okay? More dangerous daw to. This is more dangerous. And we have a base ledge. Yan. Yung base ledge, yung, yun yung nasa GIF rin ka, kanina. So, for hard and tough tissue, so, black could be moved. Okay, siguro yun yung advantage na produces serial sections. Okay, next we, got, we have ultra-thin ultra microtome. So, this is for electron microscopy. What's awesome about this, guys? It uses glass knives or diamond edge knife. Ang brand nitong diamond edge knife is a diatome. Yan. So, ito yung knife, guys. At dito sa maliit na to, nasa circle na to, is the tissue block. Yan. So, guys, as thin as 0.5 micrometer. So, complete, compare nyo naman na 4 sa rotary. Ito, 0.5, okay, less than 1. So, ganun ka, liit rin. Ang, ang liit lang pala ng paggagawa ka, guys, ng plastic resin. So, sabi na, special process required in fixation, osmium tetroxide. Tama, kasi nga, electron microscope na to, okay? And the embedding medium is a plastic, plastic resin, epoxy. Yan. So, close up, guys. Ito na, o, oh, plastic resin, itong color na to. Tapos ito, dumadaan dito. Diatome. So, it has a diamond. It's diamond coated. Naisip ko tuloy, guys. Kung magnanako kayo ng something sa laboratory, ito, diamond coated itong knife ng electron for electron microscope cutting. Yan. So, ganito ka kaliit yung plastic resin. Dito mo, itatama. Ikakat yung, yung pang electron microscopy mo. So, ang galing. And please, search videos how do they use this one. Next, guys. Freezing micros <laughs> microtome. Yan. Yan. Tinan nyo tong freezing microtome. So, this is the first one before cryostat. So, notice siguro yung environment niya. Ang lamig. Kasi it's not housed on a cabinet. Tama? So, you, the, the, the medical technology is exposed to liquid nitrogen or dry ice, whatever, freezing agent, they're using carbon dioxide. Yan, ang lamig gamitin siguro nito. So, wala siyang gloves. Ang galing naman nung gumagamit itong freezing microtome. So, lumalabas pa yung, ano, yung moisture and all. Okay. The stage is hollow and perforated in order to freeze the block or tissue. It is used to cut, ang advantage niya, to cut undehydrated tissues. So, need, no need, usually naman pag sa cryostat, no need to dehydrate. Fats or tissue constitute may be damaged and it's for rapid diagnosis. So, syempre guys, cryostat is way superior kumbara sa freezing microtome. Ito siguro yung tatay niya. So, it's invented in 1848. So, mas luma sa sa Rotary, sa Cambridge. And its thickness is 10 to 15 micrometer thick for neurological tissues. Okay. Yan. So this one is your cryostat. Kita nyo naman, no? ito ang crude-crude. Ito, oh, it's ergonomically pleasing. Yan. So mas maganda. Yeah. And at least you could use this beside the, if 
you are in the surgery room, operating room, sa labas niya, pwedeng nakalagay lang to, di ba? So, yan. So, the microtome, usually a rotary microtome is housed inside a cabinet with a regulated temperature. Yan. So, okay. Next, guys. So, refrigerated cabinet. So, we could use liquefied nitrogen, isopentane, dry ice, carbon dioxide gas, and aerosol spray. So, the size is rotary, 4 to 6. The temperature inside is negative 5 to negative 30. I think it's way colder. Gumamit ng cryostat, imbis na freezing, microtome. So, it has so many advantage, hindi ba? So, intraoperative diagnosis for rapid uh, rapid diagnosis, for enzyme histochemistry, for labile enzymes. So, when we say labile enzymes, which are unstable, easily destructed by destroyed by heat, immunofluorescent. So, if you need... If you need ano, fluorescent staining, antibodies, yan, immunohistochemistry. If you want to detect the biochemical substances, it will not destroy. When heat may inactive and or destroy antigen. So, yun nga eh. Di ba, hindi natin, hindi okay ang immunostaining pag paraffin wax. Kasi it could destroy antigen. So guys, for cryostat, we don't use um, paraffin wax for embedding, ha? So sometimes gelatin. Some We have this, ano eh, OCT. Hindi ako nagkakamali. Yan. Tapos, it could be for lipids, determination carbohydrates, for silver staining, and yan. So guys, that's the end of our part 1. Mag-ready sa part 2. Bye-bye.